Welcome to my uh, final project presentation. So this project, I want to first of all write a simple CUDA kernel in uh, C++ and CUDA uh, and then call it in Python. Uh, this goal is achieved. Uh, I, I wrote a pixel normalizer for uh, normalizing you know, pixels for grayscale image. Um, and then I did a timing comparison between uh, PyTorch CPU, uh, PyTorch GPU, and um, the imported, you know, C++ CUDA kernel. And then the second goal is to um, understand GPU parallel computing by writing neural network in uh, C++ and CUDA. Uh, this is achieved by, uh, you know, doing the uh, meanest digit recognition using uh, custom uh, neural network uh, written in C++ and uh, CUDA. And also I did some timing analysis. Uh, the stretch goal is to package the neural network implemented in C++ and CUDA and call it in Python. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to do this. As an introduction to, you know, minus digit recognition, uh, we have those kind of handwritten digits from zero to nine, and each of those image is a 20 by 20 uh, pixel grayscale image. And uh, there are uh, 60,000 such images available as a, a training data site, and uh, 10,000 of those um, available as the test data site. So the CUDA kernel that I implemented for this pre-processing is very simple kernel. Uh, you just implement that equation. The purpose of this is to uh, convert the raw uh, pixel, which is between 0 to 255, uh, to a number between you know, negative 1 and uh, 1. And this math um, equation will be uh, applied on each pixel. Um, and because you know it is kind of uh, utilizing the same equation uh, multiple times on uh, you know different data, it falls into a regime that you know single instruction uh, multiple data. Uh, that's why I wrote this simple kernel. Um, the kernel itself I will show later, but uh, this shows you the host side kernel caller, which is which calls this kernel, uh, and it demonstrates that a launch this kernel by uh, giving uh, this grid layout and the block layout. Uh, each block has uh, 1024 threads, and uh, each grid has, um, you know, mining blocks, and the number of blocks we launch is determined by the n here, which is the uh, number of pixels that we want to deal with. So the end goal is to launch enough uh, such blocks uh, eventually launch enough threads to uh, take care of each each pixel. And in terms of packaging this kernel uh, as you know written in the C++ and CUDA as a Python module, uh, on the high level the PyBand 11 library needs to be used because it's a, a C++ and Python interface. Um, and this PyTorch C++ API is needed because uh, we intended to use this module together with the uh, PyTorch tensor. Um, and uh, this package uh, includes you know, the following uh, sub, sub libraries. And the one that we use is the A10 uh, library, which uh, provides a definition for tensor in C++. And then uh, the Torch script, which help to uh, interface to the uh, JIT compiler, which is just in time uh, com compilation. And then uh, we use this uh, C extension, uh, which basically um, you know, provide as a API for uh, custom C and the CUDA. So, um, if we are just dealing with the normal C++ and uh, uh, interface with Python, uh, we wouldn't need this PyTorch C++ API. 
Uh, the only reason we need this is because uh, we want our uh, you know module to be able to directly uh, work on the PyTorch tensor. So now we are uh, basically on AWS. Uh, I launched the AWS uh, instance uh, to do my funding project. And uh, this funnel project, uh, the part that is related to uh, this um, data pre-processing is basically um, in this you know, kernel. This kernel is the uh, actual kernel that we wrote for uh, pixel normalization. And uh, uh, this portion of the code is the uh, host side kernel caller, which is the harness that uh, basically specify how to launch this uh, kernel written in CUDA. And uh, the uh, actual, besides this file, uh, the header file that uh, uh, import uh, actually exports the definition of this uh, you know, uh, kernel launcher is located here. Um, and then inside the PyTorch folder, uh, we have an interfacing code, which uh, in this case, we can see that we uh, write a wrapper um, using the uh, tensor definition provided by uh, the Aten library. Uh, you know, in this case, we interface with our uh, C++ side, um, you know, host side uh, kernel launcher, um, and wrap it around uh, such that uh, it can understand the it can directly operate on the tensor, um, and then. Uh, we use this torch library stuff, which uh, basically uh, specify, uh, you know, this, it basically register this uh, function uh, into uh, libraries that will be uh, later on compiled. And um, um, this PyBind 11 module, uh, you know, is used um, here. Uh, basically, the aim is to uh, specify, in this case, this parameter specify uh, in the Python module, if you use the help function, uh, what type of text uh, will be displayed. And uh, um, this one is basically point to the uh, actual function on the C++ side. And this one specify like the uh, function uh, name on the Python side. Uh, this is related to this uh, Python um, you know, Jupyter Notebook. If we go here and uh, just uh, restart the kernel, uh, we kind of import the torch and the uh, NumPy. Um, and then this function kind of load the uh, data in from the this data folder. And we have this uh, UBYT format uh, data of you know training data, uh, training labels, and uh, uh, the testing uh, data and labels. When we run this, um, it will read in the data, and then we can see that we have uh, uh, 60 thousand uh, samples, and then um, each of them is flattened to 784 um, each sample. Uh, it's because you know we have each image is 28 by 28, and uh, if you flatten it out, it's 784, um, you know, pixels. And then uh, here we can see that it, they are all NumPy, and uh, uh, this is the dimension information again, the data type. Uh, uh, we have to uh, transfer the NumPy to Tensor because later on we want to use the PyTorch. And then uh, here you can see that uh, this is the uh, torch tensor, uh, and then the size doesn't change. Um, and then if we run this line, you can see that the this is this these are not normalized. They, they are from zero to 20, 255 for both the NumPy version and the uh, converted tensor. Um, and then we will write our uh, this custom uh, you know CUDA function for uh, normalizing the pixels. And uh, this is the version of the torch I use. And then we kind of compile this thing by the just-in-time uh, option, which utilizes the CNA extension 
library where uh, you need to specify the source um, and uh, also the uh, include paths now that needs to match here and uh, if we compile this and then uh, we can print out these tensors they are on the uh, CPU right the the module that load in is called uh, CUDA module we will use this to operate on these tensors later um, and this device available it shows you that uh, I have the GPU and uh, um, this operation will push these tensor raw tensors to um, you know in this I pushed the test tensor into the uh, device and you can see that uh, uh, training tensor right now is on the CPU and the test tensor is pushed to device um, in this case uh, this just create a copy empty tensor which I want to use it as a holder for my uh, normalized results uh, here you can see that uh, I called my uh, packaged CUDA module dot this function is the one that we implemented in uh, C++ and CUDA right and when you operate this function it will kind of uh, uh, pass the normalized results back here and this is the raw results right and uh, um, this is kind of given how long um, you know that and how many pixels you want to uh, operate on so if we run this and uh, uh, here you know you, you recall that if I run this help uh, this is the text that you defined previously uh, you know in, in that interfacing function and then if you uh, print out this you know you can see that uh, this uh, normalized function is between uh, one and negative one so function functionality wise uh, we achieved the pixel normalization and then we need to push this uh, tensor back to CPU for some plotting here I just plotted uh, the last uh, few images right so uh, for the timing part I actually wrote this uh, CUDA function uh, which internally it calls this CUDA module uh, kernel and operate on this uh, you know raw image and uh, you can see this is a full circle which means that uh, uh, it includes the time it you push this data onto the device and uh, then uh, call your customer kernel to normalize the data and then push the uh, normalized data back to CPU so this is the master custom CUDA version and uh, in this PU uh, PyTorch tensor version uh, it operates on the uh, CPU um, there's nothing related to GPU here it's just the, the same equation um, you know operate directly on CPU and then this is the Pew PyTorch uh, tensor operates on the GPU and uh, this GPU basically uh, do the same thing but here we kind of um, you know we push the tensor uh, to the CUDA to the GPU and then we well, instead of using the custom kernel we are uh, you know using the PyTorch uh, native operation and then uh, after that I, we push the data back to CPU so you can see there is some overhead in terms of pushing data on and off the device which that overhead does not exist in the Pew uh, CPU version and just make sure that I run this um, and then there is a wrapper function you know calling those function on the um, this training tensor which uh, contains 60 solid uh, images um, and then we call this three version um, pixel normalizer on those data and 
these are three methods and we want to time how fast uh, you know that function those function actually operates that's why this function show time is written uh, kind of uh, uh, here is like for the JIT compilation version you know at the first time um, um, when it's called it will compile so we skip uh, for the first 10 runs uh, to do a kind of warm-up and then after that we uh, run this uh, same function multiple times and uh, uh, at the end we take the mean to get the average running time so uh, we run this for the uh, in this case the run CUDA version we can see that uh, This takes this much time, and uh, if we run the CPU version, right? Run CPU, and uh, this is like if you run the uh, GPU version. And we can see that uh, actually, this is an indicator that. Um, the computation that we we, we are doing um, in terms of uh, pixel normalization is not complicated enough to justify the usage of GPU basically um, in this case the CPU version actually is the fast, fastest one and uh, our CUDA version is on the same level as the uh, PyTorch GPU version uh, and there is overhead like what I said uh, pushing data on and off the device uh, if your actual processing time is not, um, you know, long enough or is not complex enough for the data processing, then it's not worth the effort to use GPU. Even if in this case it's falls while in the uh, single instruction multiple data case. And uh, the rest of the uh, notebook, I just uh, continues to sort of. Uh, uh, you know, use I used this uh, pre-processed tensor and uh, build up a, a neural network in PyTorch uh, to train on those um, you know uh, data and and then kind of uh, you know make it to be able to recognize the digits, right? And I will not go into details about uh, all this. Um, Feel free to have a look if you are uh, interested. This train a model and then, um, you know, this defines a test. And uh, before training this model, we test it and uh, uh, you can see the accuracy is very poor. Uh, and for here, we start the training process. And uh, you can see that uh, the training, you know, we specified three epochs and uh, the loss of the training goes down uh, while the accuracy goes up. Um, and then there is options that you can plot the uh, training loss and testing loss um, through a number of samples. And we can, you know, plot the uh, results and see if our prediction is correct this is number two uh, predict number two predict number six predict two three two so they are uh, accurate and then you can continue from where you left uh, to continue train the model and uh, uh, in this case we uh, stopped at the epoch three so we can uh, continue to train uh, for our epoch 4, epoch 5, and uh, uh, we can see the accuracy keeps uh, increase until you know this is 90, 91, um, epoch 8. Uh, again, you can plot the loss, and uh, it's almost plateaued here. So, uh, this is one aspect of my project where implement a custom uh, CUDA kernel and uh, uh, you know, as a as a data pre processing tool, 
Um, and you can do more complicated stuff. For example, you can use the NPP library to uh, rotate those uh, image, image, right? Um, when number six, if you rotate a little bit, it should also be number six. This is a great way to generate uh, synthetic data. Uh, and another aspect of my project Another part of my project is using CUDA for uh, neural network training. And uh, there, uh, before I go into details, you know, this is uh, kind of the platform I used on AWS Ubuntu, and uh, I'm using the uh, Tesla K80, and this is the CUDA driver version and CUDA runtime version 11.3. Um, so this hardware capability has to be respected. So before going into the details about this part, uh, I do want to uh, point out that the neural network uh, implemented in CUDA and C++ is largely uh, borrowed from the uh, original project developed by uh, Borna Amadidi. Uh, and I basically borrowed uh, his work and uh, uh, modified it for the purpose of um, minus digit uh, recognition. So, in terms of the the code, uh, you know uh, that is relevant to this. Uh, first of all, you have to uh, provide produce the data. Uh, in this case, this. Python uh, notebook is used for uh, doing the one hot encode. Uh, so for each of um, the digits zero, you know, one, two, three, four, up to nine, uh, I have to do the one hot encoding uh, in order to, um, you know, make it uh, uh, work uh, using the uh, neural network implemented in uh, CUDA because that neural network is using um, the so-called um, mean square error um, cost function, but not uh, cross entropy. Um, and to, to kind of use that mean square error function, uh, we have to one hot encode our uh, label. Um, and uh, our neural network will be kind of 10 output, and uh, each output will be uh, given a label. So you have to do the one hot encoding. This function doing is, is performing the one hot encoding. So you, if you run this, it will load the original data in, and this original data is not the one hot encoded version. And this function here do the one hot encoding. And if you run this, it will do the one hot encode. Uh, you can see that in this case, the one hot encoded version for the first uh, 10 samples, it kind of doing, actually none samples, uh, it kind of doing this, right? This is the, um, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is, not, this is actually number 7. And when you run this, it will uh, save your uh, data, um, you know, into the uh, CSV file that uh, uh, locates here in terms of this, you know, training and testing. Um, this data will be read in by uh, C++ by uh, running this uh, read CSV uh, C++. And if we go to, in this case, um, you know, we have a version that implemented for CPU and have another version uh, implemented for GPU. And uh, uh, let's demonstrate the uh, GPU version first since the CPU version will take a long time. So let's go out of here and go into the GPU folder to uh, make clean. Um, and in the in this file, the main file is this main minus.cool where uh, you can specify the training sample, the uh, training batch size and the uh, 
you know number of import, number of output, the number of airports, and the uh, login terminal um, for some for printing out some loss information, and then this for the testing. So uh, for the total number of samples uh, available uh, to us is sixty thousand, um, and uh, in this case we are training every uh, six hundred as a batch, um, and the import number for the neural network is 784 uh, the number of output is 10 right? um, because input is like 20 by 20 28 by 28 uh, grid scale image you flatten it out is 784 and then number of output like what I said we did the one hot encoding so number of output is 10 and uh, uh, number of iPods just means that you're gonna loop through this data uh, this this data total training data three times and uh, in terms of here we read in the uh, data and then here we kind of define the neural network uh, as you can see that we created a, a two-layer neural, neural network and uh, uh, here we do the training um, and then uh, in the train GPU you know this is how we time the code we time the total time spent on uh, training the uh, three epoch number of epoch uh, and then we report that and inside the uh, train GPU we sort of uh, uh, also you know every uh, 20 batches we uh, report the uh, training losses and let's run this so if we make And this will have the uh, executable, you know, GPU kernel. And if you run this, uh, it will start the training process. And each airport will train uh, 600 data. Uh, out of uh, you know 60 southern and you can see that the training loss doesn't really uh, reduce that much this this is expected actually uh, because we are using uh, the mean square error uh, you know cost function and this function is no uh, is known to be uh, not a, a very good choice for uh, doing classification because it's non-convex under the um, you know, uh, so-called logistic regression uh, assumption, and uh, really we should improve our cost function to uh, cross entropy. But I don't have that much time. It will be a future work, uh, but it doesn't hurt. Um, the purpose of our project uh, is to demonstrate the parallelization uh, operation of CUDA, right? So you can see that we are training for Apoch 0 and then we are tra training for Apoch 1 and uh, now we are training for um, Apoch 2, right? And network, a little bit more about network. Uh, this network has uh, 512 hidden layers, uh, hidden units in the hidden layer. Uh, finished training it, uh, took 87 uh, seconds to train this and now uh, you know you can play around to uh, change the total training samples you can change the uh, training batch size uh, and similarly you know there is a CPU version which uh, can do the same thing let's go to the CD CPU And let's see training dot cpp can enable the logging. Uh, so here you can change the sample size as well. Just as a comparison, I'm gonna make this uh, sixty thousand as well, and the settings are the same. And we can uh, kind of make here. 
and then we can do CPU kernel, right? And this actually takes a while. It uh, kind of very, very long process. And another reason that this loss doesn't, um, you know, be minimized is probably because um, our gradient descent stuck at a, a local minimum. Um, besides implementing a more advanced cost function, maybe implementing, um, you know, a more advanced uh, optimizer like item, uh, it will also help. We can we can already uh, we we can al already have a sense that how slow uh, this, this this thing is. I'll continue my uh, presentation while waiting for that results. So. These are some timing results that I summarized. Um, recall that we can uh, vary the training batch size and uh, observe the training time utilized by GPU and CPU. Uh, the, this paragraph, this graph shows you that uh, uh, when we use, uh, in this case, uh, 6,000 batch size um, and uh, 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 when we use like in this case it's probably 600 and uh, also I use some small uh, training batch size uh, this GPU time is uh, much shorter than the CPU time and batch size almost has no impact on the training time for uh, CPU and uh, when, when, when you use extremely tiny uh, batch size like 10 uh, the first one uh, you know when the batch size um, starts increasing, the time spent on GPU actually reduced a little bit. Um, that's uh, kind of expected because um, you know uh, GPU really is doing parallel operation on uh, each sample in, in, in a batch. So uh, at the beginning, when your uh, batch is small, uh, you have more, um, more, more than enough computational resources uh, basically the streaming processor to work on those additional samples when you increase the uh, batch size um, and uh, at the end of the day you know um, you have so only so much computational resources so it's gonna saturate out that's why uh, your training time plateaued and uh, uh, beyond a certain point it does not kind of uh, reduce further when you increase the batch size um, but this shows you like uh, how much uh, multiples or times uh, GPU helped to um, increase the uh, speed it's almost uh, like 20 times and 25 times uh, at different batch sizes and I also did the analysis by varying the uh, in this case, varying the total training samples, and I fixed the batch size to be 600. And for the training samples, we can see that both GPU and the CPU sort of uh, 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 the training training time increased linearly with the uh, total training samples. Uh, and uh, basically, because the initial uh, time needed for GPU is uh, very tiny. So even if it linearly increases, um, when it reaches these, you know, 60,000 uh, images, um, it's still spending quite small amount of time, training time. Um, but on the other hand, the GPU actually, uh, the CPU will actually spend a lot of more, uh, 20, uh, more than 2,000 seconds. And uh, in terms of the acceleration, you know, GPU helped to accelerate um, by almost uh, 25 times across the, the, the different cases with different total training samples. Now let's uh, think about why uh, GPU can accelerate the training process. Uh, using 
let's just use like a three inputs, two outputs, uh, linear layer, uh, you know, as an example. Uh, for this linear layer, there will be a three times two uh, weight, weight matrix and a two bash vector. Uh, basically, for outputting this one single output, you have to do three multiplications, right? Uh, and then you have to add one uh, bash there. So same, similarly for this unit, you have to do three multiplications and uh, uh, do sort of one add the bash. And um, here on, on CPU for each output unit, we have to do the following operations for each training sample. Uh, we have to do three multiplications, which is uh, the input unit multiply the weight on the, on the edge. Um, and uh, we have to do two additions, which uh, is the accumulation of the results from from this, uh, you know, multiplication multiplications, and then we have to do kind of one addition for adding this bias, um, and that's for two outputs and uh, uh, 100 samples. Uh, we have to do you know 100 times two times uh, uh, in this case the original three uh, multiplications and 100 times two times two. Uh, additions for accumulation of the results and 100 times 2 times 1 for uh, adding bias. So uh, all these competition must go one by one in a serial manner uh, considering um, using a one core CPU. And if we use GPU for this, like, uh, you know, each CUDA thread will do the following operation for one sample and for a specific output uh, unit. Uh, for example, you know, three multiplication, uh, two additions, and then one uh, for bash, uh, one addition. And what does that, this mean? This means that if you have enough computation resources, uh, enough CUDA cores or three multiprocessors, you can uh, finish, you know, 100 times two times three multiplications, 100 times two times two additions, and 100 times two times one additions uh, using the same amount of time uh, for, for doing the uh, three multiplication and two additions and one additions. Um, this will mean that uh, you will achieve uh, 200 times acceleration in training time. So the reason that we didn't uh, achieve uh, 2,000 times, um, you know, acceleration, we achieved pretty much, you know, 25 uh, times, is because uh, it will fin finally limited by your uh, available, you know, um, computational resources, right? Um, and uh, the scheduler will gonna you you want to uh, do this uh, 200 uh, you know thing in parallel, uh, but uh, actually you know there's not that much um, that that many uh, streaming processor available uh, for you to use, uh, depending on your hardware capability and your operating uh, you know conditions, but. All in all, uh, it's very common to say, uh, you know, 20 times, 10 times, uh, you know, 30 times kind of um, acceleration. Uh, one thing is I want to improve the cost function by implementing the uh, cross entropy to replace the MSE um, and then improve the optimizer by implement the uh, atom uh, and then uh, try to improve the data interfacing code uh, to replace the CSV uh, reader uh, with the HDF reading. Um, and then I want to do like a timing comparison with a uh, PyTorch based neural network. And uh, finally, I want to finish, you know, package the, the custom C++ CUDA based neural network into the Python module. And now, uh, and we can see that after all this waiting time, um, the uh, CPU version is actually still training and it hasn't finished the uh, Apoch Zero. And that's it, that's my project. And uh, um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach uh, out to me through uh, email or uh, you know, just uh, post questions under the uh, final project itself.